Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. Let's uh, take a deep dive into the Lee Kirby masterpiece, This Man, This Monster. What number was that? Issue 51 of uh, Fantastic Four? I don't know. <laughs> I think it is, yes. Okay. <laughs> but first, Jimmy, what do you have? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can join me and download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. I have about a dozen of those up there now. You can also see my original art. You can see scripts and processes of how I make the comics I make like Street Angel, Octobriana, and much more at patreon.com slash jimrock. Tom, what do you have? I created this comic right here, Fantastic Four Grand Design, which uh, includes the um, This Man, This Monster in its entirety, uh, recolored by uh, my co-host, Ed. And um, I also did uh, uh, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, uh, the story of Jack Kirby's life, and find out you know how he created the Fantastic Four, among other uh, you know things we, we know him and love him for. You can also check out my uh, YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics in the Wild, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Every issue completely self-contained, so if you see an issue, scoop it up. You're going to get a full story of varying length. This first issue, 64 pages worth of comics. Uh, you can get these at your local comic shop. We're reprinting issue one, so if you don't see it right now, you're going to see it in September. Uh, different cover. Um, you can order these comics from Fantagraphics at my link tree in the description below this video or uh, hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks gets you the archive there and you'll be able to read these comics before they hit paper. Let's crack it open, fellas. This Man, This Monster, issue 51 of uh, Fantastic Four. I read this comic for the first time in that uh, giant Abrams uh, Marvel book by yeah. Les Daniels. It was one of the three or four stories that was included in the back there. Uh, so Les told me that it was an important comic, and upon mm -hmm. reading it, uh, one of the things that I really liked, because when I got that book, I was kind of starting to age out of your typical superhero comic. Uh, this is a more character-driven story than they probably traditionally uh, would have done. You know, you don't even see Reed Richards stretch once, I don't think. <laughs> you know, it's also like, um, th that's it, I'll, I'll get back to that later, but um, th it's also like... Um, when when they're bringing like the greatest moments of like Marvel or whatever, it's it's hard to find a really good like concise one yes. issue story right. that does it all the way this does because at this period, you know, Jack and Stan aren't really doing that anymore. They're not doing concise single issue stories. They're doing these rambling, beautiful, glorious epics where you're getting just like a little slice of the pie of like a million things happening at once that have been going on for years and are going to go on for years now. So this is sort of a rarity. They're at the top of their game. And giving you, like, the sort of done-in-one you would have gotten with, like, the first couple issues of Fantastic Four. Hot off the heels of the Galactus trilogy, we have this issue, and then the next issue introduces Black Panther to the Pantheon, man. Heck of a little run there. Yeah, and you, said, kind, you kind of have to follow up that sort of big, cataclysmic, the universe is going to blow up kind of story with like a, something a smaller moment. and personal. Yeah, to get your, catch human. your breath. Yeah, Going from the gods back to the humans. Guys like Don Simpson, and I, I think uh, Larson does this as well, they they took these kind of textures to heart. Yeah, like they the put, Senate stuff. Yeah, they put those like little like dots in a in a order on onto their work. Yeah, well, and you've never, like, you know, you're reading this stuff, you've never seen like a Jack Kirby pencil or whatever, so this is just how you assume Jack Kirby draws, but it's, it's like the Jack Kirby, Joe Sinnott sauce. Yeah, I, I can never stress enough on this on this channel how much like Joe Sinnott was it yeah. whenever you know like when I'm 14 looking for comics and trying to figure out stuff there were no debates it wasn't like oh Mike Royer might mm -hmm. be better or something like that it was like this was gospel you know yeah. and it, it was pretty dogmatic that this was it so it makes sense to me that a generation would grow up and this is the kind of mark making they would fetishize you know the thing in these first especially the, the opening page but these first couple pages could be like the character for like a depression medication. Oh, absolutely! Uh, commercial, you know, it's like, do you feel? Because it, it just the the water, the heaviness of the figure, his posture, the whole environment, the rain. You just feel the weight of like depression and sadness and, and very melancholy. different rain than like a. Uh, I always think Will Eisner when I think rain, especially mm -hmm. for something like this and an older comic, but a pretty different interpretation of rain visually. Yeah. Straight up and see. down. Yeah. Just pouring straight up and down with with ruler lines, you know. There's that thing too where you have to break up those straight lines to make sure that it's not a it doesn't communicate like a different gutter uh -huh. or something, man. 
Thing is always kind of like doing a little something, even though he's just being a psychic vampire, pulling books off the guy's mm-hmm. shelf. A stranger invites you into his house, <laughs> man, out of the rain. Has that kind of brow. Well, it's like, it's you, nice. You, you good to drink what he pours? pours <laughs> it's nice to see a familiar face. You know, it's like, it's like he's looking in a mirror. Yeah, Lawrence Tierney. <laughs> or um, uh, the Michael Chiklis. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, proportion stuff is always funny, man, because like that's a pretty small looking thing. You know, he fits pretty comfortably on that on that. Well, couch yeah, there. some like the way Kirby draws the thing. Sometimes he's a giant, and sometimes he's like shorter than everybody else. Yeah, good example right there. Tight nine panel grid too. Grid very strong throughout this story, varying up those those points of view, bouncing us around a little bit. Now we've talked about some like favorite, like Jack Kirby's favorite issue or whatever of what he worked on. This is one that Stan Lee would posit as like his favorite comic that he did. I think that this is probably an important comic to a guy like a uh, Chris Claremont who is interested in character in in the guise of like superhero comics and stuff. I thought you were going to say who's verbose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Frederick Wortham was right. <laughs> I don't feel like you need to defend this comic, though, in Not any way, all. like in terms yeah. of, oh, it's good for character or something like that, because it really is like, this was a, this was another one, I, I read this this week, it's just a pleasure to read. Yeah. yeah. It, it is, it, it's like that Marvel formula kind of hits just right, and, and its completeness helps, too, because sometimes it's hard if you're handing, like, a Marvel comic to somebody, and like, oh, well, I don't know what happened before this, and oh, there's no ending, it says to be continued, what am I supposed to do next? It's it a also good episode. doesn't slip into, like, sentimentality at all, which is... I feel like it could. Like I've, you think of the themes that are in this story, and I feel like it doesn't go in, into that direction. See, I'd say that it that it does a bit for, for my taste. Um, like it's it's just a little bit saccharine. Like I love it. I enjoy. It's a little bit pap, M- melodramatic, melodramatic. But like in a way that, like I don't see Jack Kirby calling this his best comic. I see Stan Lee calling it his best. Like because I think like Jack Kirby's best stuff is a little more cynical. A little less like you know trying to find you know grandstanding and and um but yeah i mean yeah yeah you can't deny the the allure of this also like it's it's um there's other comics i think you could present as like here's a great marvel comic here's the typical greatness of what these guys do but you're not gonna find another one that's complete so mm-hmm. so like you're missing a piece of the puzzle because this is because this is not typical i always forget that our michael chiklis guy is not the the puppet master or the puppeteer or whatever that guy's name is. Yeah, it's is. a completely new character. And it is sort of like a spirit story. You're not really focused... Like, the thing, we see him visually throughout the story, but he disappears pretty early on in the story. And we're basically just seeing, you know, this random guy who shows up, you know, who's, who's born and dies in this issue. He shows up in, like, the e- issue before, like, after... Um, Galactus, they're kind of setting up the the bowling pins, and you see him for like two seconds, you know, sort of uh, getting angry at the Fantastic Four. Yeah, and it's building to this moment right here when Ben Grimm shows up in his human form and it becomes that doppelganger story. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like there's probably like a dozen Stan Lee doppelganger kind of stories. This one's great because always Ben Grimm wants to be Ben Grimm, right? Always trying to get mm-hmm. back to the human version of himself. He's finally the human. And now, like, his friends don't even recognize yeah. him. Like, he's... He's, he's, he's an outcast. He's miserable. Like, he's not... Yeah. The, you know, this is not Ben Grimm, even though it's Ben Grimm and it's what we think he wants to be. Yeah. And he doesn't even put up a fuss, man. All right, guys. Fuck you. I'm out. Yeah, I mean, he gives him a piece of his mind before before he split. I love this panel. Like, rereading this, this one stood out to me. And I can't totally explain mm-hmm. why. It feels very Kirby-esque, but not super dynamic. There's just something about it. It's so plain and simple and solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, how about this panel? <laughs> yeah. That thing is freaking awesome. That is really yes. awesome. <laughs> Kirby doing his thing. Yeah, you got like. But the... you expect this. You know, you get a mm-hmm. splash from right. Kirby, and it's like, yes, this one is just kind of almost weird. So Here's Tom, like. You have the, uh, tra- the uh, Treasury edition. Yeah, this is the Treasury where it's like reprinted. And yeah, for these Treasuries, because of the, so- the, the shape, and, and sometimes for space too, like they cut out a couple of the subplots in here too. But yeah, they 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 trim the top off of that um, that that splash. Yeah, and they even add a piece from like I guess presumably the next page. The next page. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. It's so strange to me when they do that. Like they're saving a page here or there. I, I guess John maybe, Romita making a paycheck, man. You know, Got to get the page count to work out, but it's still just I don't know odd. I like this subplot with Johnny Storm uh, I don't think is in the reprint. Right. Right. They would always cut those out in the mm-hmm. treasuries. Which again, 
to me, all that is like part of like the beauty of Marvel is like these like ongoing, you know, soap I mean, operas. I, I loved that stuff. It like it's just like collecting G.I. Joe figures and stuff as a kid. Like there was a character called Chuckles, and it was just a dude with a Hawaiian shirt. And mm-hmm. it was the only regular looking dude. It's like you need yeah. some context for these like super heroic mm-hmm. figures and these these commandos. Like give me a regular dude. I I just I guess that like uh, Hasbro couldn't market a packet of figures that's a victim <laughs> or, or hostage or something like that. But it's this, fun to see Kirby doing like people in civilian clothes. All, all you know, quote unquote normal people. Right. Yeah, I mean he he certainly did plenty of that during the fifties with like the romance stuff. So there's still like a real order to everybody. Yeah, it's it's very readable. You know, you're not you're not lost. I and mean, that's your only example of super heroics uh, or superpowers. Yeah, and in it's, this... it's understated. Yeah. Well, and it's also combined with a guy taking a sip of coffee, like <laughs> right. the most mundane moment. Yeah, pretty awesome. Okay, so we cut out that whole piece, and this this then was the, straight to the next panel. Yeah. yeah, I guess is the guy putting the book together. The challenge is we need this panel, but what do we do with the previous two mm-hmm. and two thirds pages? Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of fun having this story in the Fantastic Four Grand Design because then you can kind of see like what I like went with and cha- like it was really fun goosing that story, ta- taking elements out, adding elements, I was amping ask up you things. About that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. To me, this is a memorable page, man, yeah. with just all this kind of psychedelia. I really like that mm-hmm. this panel a lot, but yeah, the whole page works well. Yeah, it's like a, just a good intro to like their whole world. Like, if this is the first Fantastic Four comic you read, you you could do much worse than this. Yeah, how about this sucker? Bro? That was so much fun. I shrunk that collage down into one like tiny panel in the comic. It was so much fun. This is straight out of the Lichtenstein canvas, man. Mm-hmm. Pop art comics. Yeah, I, I really this like you. Did the coloring on, on this version, and I really like your choices. Like you know, it's 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 not a, like a, a just a duplication of, of the previous. When thing. when you're when you're coloring this stuff, you're seeing it on your monitor at a giant size. You're seeing every like, you know, one of these little dots is the size of a quarter or something. And studying that Kirby work that close, man, it's magical stuff. Now, there's interesting stuff, uh, maybe to some people, uh, uh, to me, but. Um, the uh, with this negative zone stuff like Jack Kirby's understanding of the negative zone and Stan Lee's were sort of at odds so Jack Kirby drew like just sort of like a generic planet with these things drawn getting drawn that into looks the, like earth right that that's what Jack Kirby drew was a generic planet they corrected it into earth because Stan wanted uh, for Jack Kirby you're in the negative zone or subspace as he called it you're in a completely different dimension where everything you know it's it's all made out of uh, uh, of um, what's called negative uh, antimatter. So you're getting drawn towards this alien antimatter planet. Maybe, maybe the planet Blast Stars from, or whatever. You're getting drawn towards that, and if you touch that, you're going to explode. Uh, Stan had a different interpretation where it's like, oh no, this is Earth, and they're, they're being drawn out of this antimatter dimension back into our dimension, and, and they're going to, like, there's almost like a portal to Earth or whatever, and, and you're going to crash into Earth. So, like, if you look at Kirby's pencils, he didn't draw. He didn't draw South America, North America. This is and and, and so like that becomes an ongoing thing. That they, they're both sort of the the push and pull of Stan and Jack, where like Jack's telling one story in his drawings and 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 Stan's telling another in his words. That's cool to know. It's also interesting how much like you think of this as like the Ben Grimm a Ben Grimm story, and he's not in it. And it's really like Reed Richards is the guy who sort of you know yeah. his, his uh, silver tongue. <laughs> Is what redeems him and what ultimately saves his life because it turns out Reed Richards, good guy. Yeah, like in, in terms of plot, like doing Fantastic Four Grand Design, I was like, well, how worthwhile is it to spend a lot of time on this story when you're not really watching Ben Grimm? You know, and, but uh, to me, it's kind of like a little like when I made it so that when he does that matter transfer process with Ben Grimm, a little bit of Ben Grimm's nobility and kindness gets transferred over in, in the process, you know. It's a great moment whenever he does reappear, like the real mm-hmm. Ben Grimm, and we've kind of, you know, I, it'd, it'd be cool if it was told in a way like we didn't see the opening scene, right? and yeah. we just saw the imposter Ben Grimm the same way Fantastic mm-hmm. Four sees him, where like as a reader, if we really thought Ben Grimm died, mm-hmm. and then found out, yeah, oh, freedom. there's this backstory, it was actually this guy that hijacked my body, it'd be a totally different moment. And you get a little bit of what that impact is because of the way, you know, we see the Fantastic Four responding, and mm-hmm. they're so happy, it's like beloved family members alive. 
You're right. But, no, but you don't get that maximum uh, storytelling piece. A lot of like old superhero comics would would really benefit from not over explaining everything and leaving things up up to interpretation. And then so, sometimes that's sort of the strength of reading like a random old superhero comic is that you don't have all the background so you you are kind of like delighted in a way you wouldn't be if you were reading them in chronological order i recommend that yeah. like don't don't read a run of kirby's thor just grab an issue mm-hmm. just grab one and, and and check it out man you don't know exactly what's coming before or after yeah. but you could it, it feels more literary mm-hmm. if you do something like that and as if this issue isn't badass enough, you get to the very last, like, the next issue box, and it's the giant announcement of the Black Panther yes. coming. Like, man, every square inch of this comic is, is pretty, I pretty mean, hardcore. I mean, in some way, like, this this issue is right in the midst of, like, the finest moment in comic book history. Like, it, like every, everything's popping at, at once here, you know? I do love Sinnott's inks. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. You know, it it is a different version of Kirby. What you see, it's in it's this era. It's it's like blockbuster. It's like this 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 is the stuff. This is Coca Cola. This is what's going to sell a comic. Uh, other things are up to people's taste, but this is this is this is like prime time. The Sinnott look. I love this uh, <laughs> image. By the way, can't, can't get enough of it. Can't ignore it, man. Get the Mondo print, Super Giant, man. Do you have Do you have one? I don't know. Um, my my thought with that, like. That cover to issue two of uh, Dark Knight Returns, it never felt right that it was Batman to me. Right. You know, yeah, he's like, drawing like a like the Hulk or something. I, the I, thing. I mean, I always thought it was it would be better for the thing. Man. So yeah. to have that chance to do that, like, I feel like I like not necessarily righted or wrong, mm-hmm. but I, I made things right like for my own taste, man. Because that's that's yeah, a no, thing. Post. That's all. It's it's it seems so obvious now, but I I, I sure didn't think of it. Yeah, it's a great concept because it's kind of like how can you show a figure at their largest on a cover? Yeah, and so in that, pick a big fig, pick pick a big character to take advantage of that. Still balled it up, man, because because he should be cut off at all sides except the bottom. If I had it to do over again, mm. well, you you could you could do it tomorrow. Um, th- this like when I started doing Fantastic Four Grand Design, one of my thoughts was to like make like a Miller Fantastic Four, you know. Uh, and yeah. so this is like perfect for. And I was thinking of like. Reed Richards at the beginning of Fantastic Four number one, where he's got his like little flare gun that he shoots. Just thinking of him like Bruce Wayne in Batman Year One, sitting in the dark, you know, father, what am I going, you know, like, and then picking up that gun, you know, and then he's like, shoot, he's like, I will become the number four. You know? <laughs> one one other piece. This cover came out, was announced, and I was showing it off on uh, on social media and stuff when I was in Japan, uh, probably the day before I met this dude Yutaka Minoa, who was the uh, the um character designer for a ninja scroll and he was like i am such a huge fan of uh fantastic four and the thing is my favorite character and he's like you know ninja scroll right and i'm like the first bad guy is a big rock monster yes yeah with with that like with the blade that like just cuts people up yeah Yeah. exactly and it's like it's his version he that's amazing he he, he anime fies manga fies his version of the thing that's awesome. into that first uh, mm-hmm. Devil of Kimon. I like that sequence in Ninja Scroll is terrifying. It is so great. <laughs> yeah, man. We could talk about that yeah. all day, man. <laughs> Final notes. Yeah. Okay, favors. Like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where you can download hard to find out of print zines and mini comics. You can see my original art, scripts, and process for making Street Angel Octobriana and all the comics I make on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Tell them what's a good word. Uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design. There is w- one extra note. When I like was doing this issue in there, there's like a line where um, you know uh, Ben Grimm says like something about yourself, and I changed it to yourselves. <laughs> so like it's like those kind of touches <laughs> yeah. are what I'm bringing to the table. Uh, you can also check out uh, Jack Kirby, uh, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics in the Wild. Uh, Every issue completely self-contained. Get them at your local comic shop. Order them from Fantagraphics. Hit my Patreon up. Patreon.com slash Ed All these links are in the link tree in the description below this video. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, given those merchant orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>